You've got to be joking me. And what's going on, YouTube? EXO coming at you here, feeling fantastic. Just got back from family vacation and it was awesome. Saw my sister, ate a ton of lobster. Now, here we are back in the garage. Hope you guys are doing fine and dandy because today we are tackling another controversial topic, capacitors. Yes, sir, we've all heard it at least once, the infamous capacitor debate. Some people say this, some people say that. So what's the deal? Are all those cool looking capacitors from Amazon and Best Buy actually solving the problems people are buying them for? Things like dimming headlights from the base hitting and supposedly getting better sound quality by buffering up all those random bursts of power going to your sub. It all sounds great, right? But like most things, there's a couple catch 22s if you're new to the scene because there's capacitors then there's super capacitors, two totally different things that each have their place, but all too commonly get crammed into the same category together. This is where some confusion happens. On one hand, you have people saying caps are pointless, and on the other hand, you have people saying caps are amazing. So what, is everybody just going around lying or something? Well, no, this casual back and forth is most always caused by one person talking about capacitors and the other talking about super capacitors. No! God love them, the super cap crowd is so dang woke, they end up confusing the newcomers without even knowing it. All they see is, is caps for the win and ultra caps for the tits with huge rows of these things behind them. So it's no wonder why a big old blanket statement made its way around capacitors in general. I've even seen some newcomers assume that all these big banks of super caps are just a bunch of little disassembled caps like these, when that's the furthest from the truth. Then those very same new guys may go buy a one farad capacitor hoping to gain continuous power. And when it doesn't, they become the exact opposite of what they started with a blanket statement for cap sucking butt. So at any given time, there are certain parts of the car audio world that are never fully on the same page, and it's no one's fault, really. Over the years, capacitors have just become the proverbial go-to for entry level, then trash talk, and then of course for the big guys to bring them back around full circle with huge banks of super caps. Very different, but very similar. So let's see some differences, shall we? We have this fancy ultra capacitor from Ioxys and XS Power. It's a group 31, common size, and there are eight, count them, eight 3,000 farad capacitors wired inside. Now, they're all in series, so it actually totals to 375 farads. That's because capacitance gets divided by the amount of capacitors when in series. Now this guy is a Raptor 4 farad capacitor. Unlike the UC31, this is just one single layer cap wired in parallel. Instead of using multiple low voltage super caps with high capacitance, it uses one single high voltage cap with low capacitance. That translates into this bad boy being able to have the longer runtime, but arguably this will discharge all of its current quicker. The Ultra Cap, however, goes the extra mile with built-in Bluetooth for switching power modes, jump-starting batteries, checking voltage, and unlike most regular capacitors with voltmeters and LEDs, a UC31 won't self-discharge and kill itself. In fact, there's regulated power from 13 to 15 volts, so when it dips too low, the power board just turns off. Pretty cool features. This unit cost me 85 bucks for four farads, and the UC31 is 400 bucks for 375 farads. Pretty huge difference there. And if you do the math, cheaper options like this right here and so many other options like it are actually up to 2,000% more expensive than super caps. So at the end of the day, it would cost nearly eight thousand dollars to compare apples to apples with what you see right here. It would take over 90, a big pile of these, 
just to equal what we have in this ultra cap right here. Pretty wild stuff. And to help spread the fun, we are giving away one of these ultra caps right here on YouTube, courtesy of Showtime Electronics. If you guys want to join in on the fun, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a comment on this video, and head over to the Showtime Instagram page for the official drawing. Should be pretty fun, so thanks for participating, and good luck to all the viewers. It really means a lot to have you here. All right, let's start the fun by showing off the differences in energy density that an ultra capacitor has over a regular capacitor. To do this, we are gonna attempt to start my car with a dead battery under the hood. We'll charge up each unit all by itself and use a mechanical switch to introduce the car's battery one at a time. So let's get busy wiring everything up and see what the verdict is. And of course, gotta remember to keep this switch off. Here's the positive and ground, and we're gonna hook up the positive to the switch and the ground directly to the capacitor. Neat little trick too by wiring a light in series. Whoopsh. See how the light starts shining? Check it out. Doosh, doosh, doosh. That light is from the capacitor trying to suck up all the energy that it can. Doing quick little connections like this will light the bulb, but won't charge the capacitor. <laughs> All right, here we go, the moment of truth. I'm gonna flip the switch and pull the cord on the lipo. Here we go. Let's get up there, let's get up there. Start it, start it, start it. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> well, that didn't work out in the slightest, now did it, fellas? Holy voltage drop. But to be honest, I'm not a single bit surprised. Starting a car takes a lot of energy. And when additional and more continuous type power is needed, a capacitor just can't deliver very much before completely discharging. So in this case, if you've got a dead battery, you've got a dead capacitor too. Now let's see what the UC31 does. Here we go, the moment of truth. Let's turn on our meters here. What went too far? Put it on amps, zero it out. Fully connected, we're gonna go right up and we are gonna have some fun here. The voltage will be displayed on our phone. Right there, 10 volts, just like we were before. So now we're gonna put it into run mode here, enter in our password, submit, and here we go. Ready? Here she goes. Bam, like butter. Oh my word, 14 volts rebounded instantly? You've gotta be joking me, holy crap. What an exemplary uh, freaking way of showing you guys that a capacitor like this is so much different than a capacitor like that. That's all we needed to get us the start that we need up here. Not bad, Nicholas, not bad. Talk about some results, guys. Our good old UC31 just helped out with an extra 204 amps for our starter. Now, the Raptor 4 farad capacitor was only able to help out with like 5.4. So if you do the math, that is damn near a 4,000% increase in power. So there just may be some truth to all those people that have been scorned by a capacitor. It just may have not been right for their application. Now to all us audio guys, that doesn't mean terribly much trying to start our car, right? But that's why I have a new setup with our amplifier and power meter. We'll measure the wattage going to our subs and average out those numbers over 60 seconds to compare with our Raptor 4 fare. This should settle all debate about continuous power and regular capacity. All right.
right, let's crank up the song and go ahead and push play here. Good old classic. Staying above 13 volts on average, it seemed well above that. I am very happy, a great buffer zone between the amplifier and the alternator up front. It can shove in tons of current and literally just seconds after we stopped, we're back up to 13.6, just like where we started. Now let's do another swap -a -roo and see what the Raptor does. All right guys, coming back in for the second test with the regular capacitor. You can see that our voltage is right where it should be like last time for an even test. So let's go ahead and reset the track. Make sure everything's still recording. Looking good. <laughs> But this was sucking up so much juice that the alternator was had to put in that much more work without the cap that it was making the belt squeal by making it kind of drag the horsepower down. Basically below 13 volts the whole time when before we were averaging above 13 volts the whole time. Well, there you have it, everyone. The proof is in the pudding. 90 watts less power, more voltage drop, and slightly less recovery with the four farad capacitor. Even though this does have its place for continuous power and situations where bass heads want longer durations of louder, stronger, more powerful bass, this isn't the solution. So now let's figure out what this actually does for car audio and what's a good spot to install it in. All right, so we got the Amp Dyno 81 here. You know, the Amp Dyno does something that no other tool's been able to do in this industry, and that's measure bursted signals or dynamic power. Like I said, it's the first tool in the world that's been able to do it, so because of this, we're able to hook it up and, and get some very interesting data on things. Now what you're seeing here is a bursted power test with no capacitor at all. This reveals the maximum amount of wattage available for those fractions of a second every time the light flashes red. 3,154 watts of dynamic power. For the one farad cap testing, we located the capacitor right next to the amplifier. We've got about eight inches of wire between the amp and the cap. This is the best way to do it. We'll see what the results are on the dyno. Well, would you look at that? The one farad cap did something good after all. 
3,426 watts of dynamic power. That's an increase of 9% over having no capacitor at all. Of course, they can't hang with ultra caps in the long run, but it's still cool to see those numbers in real life, even if not RMS. If you need the extra capacitance, the UC31 is still top dog today. And I wouldn't worry much about this little disclaimer here. Evidently, a couple people from the transpo industry didn't have much luck with the power modes we showed off in this video. Kind of strange if you ask me, but for all we know, it could have been a mistake, misuse, but let's face it, 10,000 were made, two people complained, and since the politics of sales is so dang cutthroat, they just recalled the whole lot. What a freaking shame, right? Well, fast forward to new ownership, experts took a look inside and got the green light for selling it as a new product, just not geared towards the transportation industry. Hence, the label. It saves a good product from disappearing entirely and saves us car audio guys a ton of money by being discounted because of it. Check out the Showtime Electronics store listing for more in-depth information and remember to save big by bundling with amplifiers and batteries. Happy shopping. Now let's wrap up all these interesting findings. We started off showing how regular capacitors don't deliver much energy over time by attempting to start my dead car battery and showed how ultra capacitors can supply tons of energy with tons of power to go along with it. Bam! The music test proved that regular caps don't help with overall voltage drop and won't help gain any RMS wattage over time. Oh, my belt! Then we showed how a capacitor could be beneficial with Tony D's dynamic power test where it acted more like a buffer for those extremely fast spikes in wattage. Located the capacitor right next to the amplifier. So at the end of the day, we've given merit to the newcomer by both confirming a common misconception and introducing a concept that shows how a regular capacitor could in fact help in some areas. How noticeable that would be, however, is completely subjective, but hey, an improvement is an improvement, right? Long story short, the UltraCap 31 is here to stay. They offer incredible performance and tons of additional features. And for an unbeatable price, Showtime Electronics is the place to be. So if you enjoyed today's presentation, please consider subscribing and participating in today's giveaway with a like and comment. Really means a lot to have you guys here and stay tuned to the Showtime Instagram page for the announcement of the winners. All right guys, this is EXO signing out, staying loud, staying proud with a whole bunch of fun today. I hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you in the next video.